That's all for Rumor Roundup. Let's start this show for the week. Now, I have my first thing here is Redfall. It's just it just says Redfall. And the reason for that is a few things. One, Bloomberg, Jason Schreier releases. Let me see if I can find it. Really quick. Jason Schreier, Redfall. It's paywalled, so I have no idea if this is even going to open. Inside the making of Redfall, Xbox's latest misfire. He has a whole article you can read about. Pretty much detailing everything you should should want to know, need to know. You really ever need to know of what happened with Redfall. If you've been paying close attention, I don't think you're missing that much out of this specific story. You can also see breakdowns on many people's Twitter accounts. Let, let's, uh, let's find... Oh my god, what's his name? Is it Benji Sales? Benji Sales? Oh my god, I'm forgetting his name. There's a guy I follow, Benji Sales, or something like that. He's a very good follow. He he like does kind of breakdowns of things like that. He does a lot of, of course, sale content. So let's do just do sales, see if it comes up. Yeah, Benji Sales. B-E-N-J-I Sales. S-A-L-E-S. Let's see if he tweeted about this. He did not. Did he? He did. Just to make sure I have everything here, this is his kind of breakdown of the thing. Originally designing the games as a service with significant microtransactions, lack of direction, understaffed, roughly 70% of developers who made Prey left Arcane during the making of Redfall. Now, if you understand everything with that, nothing really super surprising. I think there's a couple things. First off, lack of direction. Obviously, look at the game. It's a mess. Clearly, everyone involved with this project didn't really know what they were doing and never really found their footing. If you read the article, uh, the higher ups at, uh, at the studio kept telling people who had worries about the game that we'll find the uh, arcane magic in the last few months of development. Apparently, they said this verbatim, which is hilarious. And even the article itself says like that was a very common thing. At, um, was that Bethesda or Bioware? Oh, I'm blanking. I read I read the whole thing this morning on my phone because there was a free link <laughs> that you could use. So I'm blanking on on which studio, but there was another studio that they brought up and we're like, yeah, they said the same thing. And one of the funniest things is there were uh, uh, from the article is when, of course, this was made prior to the bio. This was in 20, 2018, I believe, was when they said the game was being made 23, 2019. When the buyout goes live for Microsoft, everyone involved, not everyone, but a lot of people involved actually hoped the game would be canceled or at least like delayed into the point where they could just make it a, to, into a single player game. Of course, none of that happened. Uh, Microsoft actually went full hands off and didn't touch any of it, which no, I don't think anyone who bought, who, uh, who, who was involved in the buyout, of course, like all the devs and things, really expected that to happen. I think they expected Microsoft and things to come in and start not cleaning house, but kind of like directing and these things. And they they just let them keep going. And clearly to the detriment of this game, uh, that's something Phil Spencer said on the interview with Kind of Funny Games uh, a few weeks ago. The same thing where it's like, yeah, we, we didn't help them at all. And by the time we got to them, it was too late. And they just released the game knowing it was terrible. Then we see him come out and like, you know, we're shocked that it scored the way it did uh, multiple uh, tens, tens of scores lower, which is again, like, really? I don't know. That seems shocking. And they were understaffed. And I think the biggest deal and something I'm shocked that they didn't see coming. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being naive here. 70 percent of, of. Of their staff left. Because they wanted to make a single player game. And if you think about it. It makes perfect sense. So I'm curious why they didn't see this coming. You don't go to Ar Ar Arcane Austin. To make a, a, a co-op games as a service. You go to make single player games. You, you, don't, you don't go to Naughty Dog. To and, and we're going to talk about them in a second. You don't go there to make 
not third person action adventure titles with some serious tones. So when you sit there and ask yourself, why did I join Arcane if they're going to make this co-op games as a service? You have to ask yourself, why should you stay there? And a lot of them said, yeah, why should I stay there? And they all left. Shocking that they lost most, most, if not all of their talent. They probably were able to retain a lot of their executive. The actual article says, comparing um, credits in uh, one of their previous games, Prey, sorry, in Prey, they were able to see that about 70% of them left, which is, I mean, that's hilarious. It could be slightly lower. But, I mean, and you're always expected to lose talent at the end of a project. That's kind of how it is now. Not there, because Bethesda is a much bigger studio than a random smaller studio. But, like, studios kind of lose weight after a big project because they don't really need that many people anymore unless they're going right into another project. And that might actually not even be the case anymore since a lot of places really need to hold talent because they're just people are getting poached and the talent pool is so low now, apparently. So, I I don't know. Now, am I shocked about any of this? No. Am I surprised about any of those facts? No. I feel like we knew about a half to a two-thirds, honestly, of the article. Off of just kind of reading around tea leaves and hearing things. I don't have too much more to add here. Redfall is clearly a, a giant disaster. Uh, probably the biggest disaster. And but that, it, but That's up there with Fallout 76. The only difference is... This was a new IP, so it had nothing to ruin. Fallout 76 was such a big deal because it ruined Fallout for a lot of people. And they, they, this is another, ex just another example of studios chasing the games as a service model. The Fortnite model, the Apex model, these games that, the Destiny model, just trying and, I mean, really just utterly failing utterly failing to the point where they just leave these projects in mass we are seeing this over and over and over again all of these studios just being decimated because they chased the trend and they didn't stick to what they knew they knew what they had, they had the art special arcane. Now, even the article mentions that they were never commercially successful. Understandable. They were at least critically ex acceptable. And I imagine at least Prey, I don't know. Maybe they made the money back. Maybe they were in need of revenue or at least to be able to justify their continued existence at their size. I don't know. Maybe there's more of the story of them just chasing trends, but. It's hard to not see it that way, if I'm being honest. Moving on. I mentioned it earlier, Naughty Dog is back up in the store.